The term urban wildlife might make you think of raccoons or rock pigeons. Often, with our heads down, we notice wildlife along the ground in populated areas. But what do you see and hear if you focus your attention upwards towards the sky? Nestled amongst our neighborhoods are important habitat features for a very interesting species of urban wildlife. Chimney Swifts As their name implies, these birds nest and roost in chimneys, and they can provide quite an entertaining show near dusk as groups of swifts simultaneously take turns diving into chimneys where they spend their nights. Swifts are a group of birds known as aerial insectivores, appropriately named because they are birds that eat insects while flying, including biting flies that can be an annoyance for us. Swallows, flycatchers, nightjars, and swifts are all included in the group known as aerial insectivores. Chimney swifts are the only species of swift you'll find in eastern North America. And although they resemble possibly more well-known birds like swallows, they are in fact closely related to hummingbirds as another group of extremely adept aerial acrobats. On your walks, keep your eyes open and up for brownish-gray cigars with rapidly beating wings flying above you. Listen for their fast, high-pitched, buzzy, twittering calls as they search for insects in the sky all day long. I bet you'll find at least one. Historically, chimney swifts nested and roosted in large hollows and trees of old-growth mature forests and caves. As forests were cleared, the birds were forced to relocate, and they adapted to human-made habitat, chimneys, as an alternative. Barns and other structures are occasionally used, but true to their names, unlined brick chimneys are their preferred habitat when old growth forests are not available. Chimney swifts have been recorded using chimneys since the early 1640s. You might wonder, how are they actually able to adapt to chimneys? Where do they sit while they sleep? Because of the way that chimney swift toes are oriented, they can't sit or perch like most birds, like what you would see on telephone wires. Instead, they need a rough vertical surface, like the inside of a hollow tree or a chimney to cling to. They have four toes or claws, with three pointed forwards and one pointed backwards, like many other birds. Except in chimney swifts, the backwards facing toe can swivel to the front for a better grip. Living in Canada, you won't be able to see these birds year-round. They are migratory. They overwinter in South America, and then they make a long migratory trek north and return to us in April and May each year during the breeding season. As we enjoy our warm fires in the colder months, chimney swifts are able to use the chimneys during the spring and summer. While flying, chimney swifts break off twigs from the tips of tree branches to use as nesting material. The half cup design of the nest is built by both adults in the mated pair, and the sticks are secured by sticky saliva. Once the nest is half built, the female chimney swift begins egg laying. One egg is usually laid every other day for an average clutch size of about four to five eggs per nest. Both parents take turns incubating eggs, and additional non-breeding individuals can help incubate for an average of 19 days prior to hatching. Chimney swifts are an altricial species, meaning that when the chicks hatch, their eyes are closed and they have no feathers and they're completely reliant on the adults. The breeding pair, including some extra helpers at times, catch flying insects and regurgitate them to feed the young. When the chicks are about 14 to 19 days old, even if they haven't opened their eyes yet, they start to venture out of the nest and cling to the nearby wall. This is both because they're starting to run out of room in the nest as they grow and to allow them to practice flapping their wings to start strengthening their flight muscles. When the chicks are about 28 to 30 days old, they start to fly. For the first seven days after their initial flight, the young birds return regularly to the nest to rest until they've built up some more wing strength. 
By late August to early September, these young chimney swifts are completing the first leg of their approximately 10,000 kilometer round trip journey to their overwintering grounds in South America. Although these birds have seemingly overcome many different trials, from habitat transition to learning to fly an extremely long distance in only a few short months, chimney swifts, as part of the aerial insectivore group, are experiencing the fastest population declines of any other group of birds in Canada. Canadian chimney swifts are estimated to have reduced in population size by 90% since 1970, which has led them to being classified as a threatened species at risk federally and in the six provinces they're often observed in. Continued loss, fragmentation, and degradation of chimney swift habitat on their breeding and overwintering grounds, severe weather events, and changes in insect abundance can all impact the survival of chimney swifts. In urban settings, buildings are becoming more modernized, leading to chimneys being capped, lined with steel, or being torn down entirely. As chimney swifts are our upstairs neighbors, we have the opportunity to help them come back to a home every year where they can safely roost and raise young. Look around in your neighborhood. Are there uncapped brick and mortar chimneys nearby at local schools, churches, industrial buildings, or homes? Larger chimneys, like those found at schools or factories, might be communal chimney swift roost or nest sites, sometimes numbering in the thousands of individuals, and these sites are of particular importance in maintaining chimney swift populations. Do you live in a home or work at a facility with a chimney that you think might be suitable for chimney swifts? Or are you interested in monitoring chimney swifts while experiencing the aerial acrobatics of the chimney swifts diving into the chimneys near dusk? Visit birdscanada.org to learn how to be a good Chimney Swift host or how to be part of Swift Watch, a citizen science volunteer-driven program to help fill critical information gaps and address key threats for Chimney Swifts. Additionally, you can help build and conserve habitat in two easy ways. By gardening with birds in mind, you will be able to incorporate plants into the plan for your outdoor space, whether large or small, that attract a diversity of insects, increasing the food availability for chimney swifts and other aerial insectivores that are at risk of extinction. Responsible coffee drinking is also an action you can take to help birds. Bird-friendly coffee certified by the Smithsonian Institute ensures that coffee is grown in a way that maintains forested habitat on chimney swift overwintering grounds. By working together through engagement at schools, community groups, protection at individual homes and more, we can ensure that we're being good neighbors to our upstairs companions, the chimney swifts. <laughs>